Hello, everyone. My name is Kimberly McIntyre. For those of you that are new to my channel, and I want to thank you so much for joining. And my mission is really to just share tools to help you on your health journey, which is why today I have a special speaker, and that is Tanya, the herbalist. She's going to be talking to us about the value of herbs. Tanya, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And will you share with us a little bit of your story and how you got started on this herbal journey? In my story usually comes down to anyone kind of entering the holistic realm is either you saw something kind of broken in the system for yourself or your loved ones. And for me, it really came down to seeing my mom on her deathbed. So she was on a ton of pharmaceuticals and narcotics, actually uh, very strong narcotics. And she got to the point where, you know, she was having so many side effects. And so they just gave her more and more pills and she was on her deathbed, no longer coherent, no longer able to really talk, falling asleep in the middle of conversations, just, it was not fun. And so what happened was I started to actually grieve her while she was physically still alive and started to go through a breakdown. And, you know, I get my motivation, my drive, my fierceness, I get that energy from her. So when you see that person in your life, you know, no longer able to live, it was really hard. And so I had a breakdown, I took time off work, and I sat by nature and meditated for the first time ever in my life, being like, I need to just get out of my head and kind of into the moment. And I think that, you know, being connected with nature, sitting down, meditating, I had that aha moment. And that aha moment was like, there must be something natural for her. There's got to be something. And so I went to my first ever buying my medicinal herb book, pen to paper, old school, and sitting down on a bench and just seeing what I can find out about the nervous system so that I can try to support her pain and trying to see what I can do to help her. And I was just blown away with the amount of information that I was learning. And so I was, you know, coming with this excitement to her and she was pretty much like, I've got nothing to lose. I'll be your guinea pig. And so I started to make elixirs and, and these concoctions and giving them to her and they started to help her pain. And then, so that gave her this, I think this new motivation that this is not the end all be all. And she got off of her narcotics. So after being on them for a decade, the doctors are like, there's no way that you got off of them. Obviously it wasn't easy. She went through withdrawal. She was on oxy, ziplocone, like really strong stuff. And, but she did it and she started talking again, walking again, going out, laughing. Like it was, it was such a transformation. And so I just went down that rabbit hole and never looked back. And then I found out that herbalism was a thing. I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't know you could study it and, and you know, graduate from it and all that stuff. And so the rest kind of just became history. I just became so, so, you know, delved into it. Wow. How awesome that she had a warrior on her side to help her through that. Um, amazing. And what I have found is so many people don't know, they don't know that this is available, especially right. on the scale that it's available. So, you know, we have herbal teas, which are great and they can help, but they're not really getting us the amount of minerals and things like that, that we need. And like you had mentioned, you had made her some elixirs, which helped to get even more of that into our system. And Tanya has an ebook, which I got. And of course I'm a paper girl. And so I had to print it all out. Oh, and so many people print it. That's awesome. <laughs> I love to just, you know, have that at my fingertips to go through. So I encourage you to get on here and get her ebook because there is, there's pictures, there's so much information. And I like how you've broken it up into individual sections, like on skin health, sleep, anxiety, boost immunity. So you can go straight to that section. Also in the back, there's an index for health issues that you can look up. And so just making it really convenient. I love convenience. Are there any particular herbs that you actually use yourself on a daily basis? These are your mains. How, you know, what, what would those be? What does that look like for so you? The main one that I use every single day, and I'm going to refer to pre-pregnancy. I mean, I still use it now, but even especially pre-pregnancy is nettles. Nettles is the number one that I would use every single day. Why? Because it's the one herb, which I obviously talk about it, but it's the one herb that's so high in minerals and vitamins and nutrients. Um, it helps with low iron. It's got manganese, got copper. There's just so much into that, that you can literally have a cup of tea of that daily and it could help things like anemia and so many different things. It's really good for skin. You, you feel it overall. And the best way that I personally do it is I have my, my daily smoothies every single day. Um, I always prefer liquid form because your body absorbs it so much better and differently than capsules. 
And so what I do is I steep it overnight. The longer, the better that you steep it. So I make my tea and I steep it overnight and I use that water base as the water base in my smoothie. When we have options and we know what our options are, sometimes it just helps break it down and make it so much easier. And I couldn't it, taste yeah. it at all. And you can combine it. So like now that I'm pregnant, I throw in red raspberry leaf. I throw in alfalfa, you know, I throw in skull cap and I just make one strong, strong concoction. And then I use that as the water base. And you're, you're brewing that overnight, correct? That's right. Okay. So that you're getting all of those benefits. Did you say that you're pregnant? I am. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> How exciting. Yes. Okay. So do you have your own herb garden? Partially, yes. We actually just moved in June, so it's not really all set up, and I couldn't get myself to want to get all dirty now in pregnancy because of the maintaining of it. So not quite yet, but I typically do. But at least I have my organic supplier who sends me whatever I need right now. But I love harvesting. Like I still take walks and harvest, which is exactly exactly why I put the images into that ebook because a lot of it grows abundantly right around you and people wouldn't even know. Like they'll see it and not even know that, oh, that's a burdock. Oh, that's mullein. Oh, that's this. Oh, I didn't even realize that echinacea is sitting in my backyard, lemon balm, all of these things. So that's why I put the images because you can take a walk and easily find medicine all over. That's what's so exciting. So for the first time back in the spring, I had a friend who's well-versed come over and we went foraging. And just to see, we never got out of my backyard. I had no clue. I'm like, I'm pulling these weeds and they're good for me. So we actually made a tincture out of the chickweed. Yes. And I have wild violet. Also, she was explaining to me that if you go foraging different times of the year, you're going to find different herbs in your own backyard. I love that you're saying that. Yes, because nature is so incredibly aligned with us that it tells you what you need for the season. Like right now, looking in my backyard, there's goldenrod and hyssop growing abundantly. And both of those are incredible for seasonal allergies. So it, it grows there. And, and earlier in the season, you saw echinacea, which was really good because you want to harvest it usually in like the springtime or like early summer, at which point it's really good to start, you know, boosting the immune system, white blood cells and everything like that and get you you know, absorbing that vitamin D and everything around you and prepare you for the colder months. Dandelion. Oh my goodness. Dandelion is, I wish people understood how powerful dandelion is um, because no one would be removing it off of their lawns if they actually knew that. Like dandelion, any weed actually, but dandelion especially, it's such an incredible herb that helps neutralize the soils. So right now we're seeing it more and more because of, you know, our air and the water and everything like that. You're you're seeing, you know, so many people are like, oh, there's dandelions everywhere. My lawn is covered with it. I'm like, yeah, that's that's because it's trying to neutralize the soil. Let them be. Let it almost fix your soil and put in the nutrients that it needs. Don't remove them. You can eat every single part of the dandelion. It's incredible from the root stems, flowers, all of it. Um, to the point that my son, if they're in the backyard and playing, like he knows that he can pick it up, look for any bugs. No, you can eat it. You know what I mean? And it's it's amazing because it's so high in, it's also high in vitamins, vitamin A, K, and so many things. And it's like, you can, your medicine is just outside, but we're so made to believe that it's weeds. Oh, you got to pluck that. We've got, for example, plantain. A lot of people don't even know what plantain looks like. It grows, it's, it's a, like, you'll see it and you're like, oh yeah, I see that all the time. Yeah. That's literally the number one afterbite. You don't need to buy afterbite or anything like that. Wasp, bee sting, mosquito, any kind of bug bite, you're taking that thing, you crumple it up and the fluids inside, put it on it as a poultice and, and there you go. I see, there's just so much that we need to learn about this so that we can heal our bodies. And even the Bible has told us, he's that's given right. us every herb here to heal our bodies. And that's why when people start to panic about this Health Canada thing that's coming in, obviously it sucks in what they're trying to do in terms of limitation. Um, on what we're getting my biggest thing was okay so then go learn about it because you can forage no one's going to stop you from foraging you can get right. your mushrooms you can get your herbs you can get your supplements everything right there in nature I don't know when I went foraging like this I have butterflies like it was so much fun just to it's get exciting. out there and get my hands in the dirt and that's one of the things that we are missing is getting our hands in the dirt people are so concerned about being sterile and clean you know. and you should see what my feet look like sometimes coming in and I'm literally have to put on my flip-flops and walk up to the shower just to wash my feet because they're like black from the soil but it's the, not just because of getting dirty but yeah the the microbes right the, yes. the ground the earthing right. the, the minerals that you're getting from the soil that we need 
Yes. In fact, I'm now making it a practice when I get up in the morning to go check my gardens. I'm going outside barefoot. Let's get some grounding going on. Yeah. Start out the day, right? Get some sunshine. What amazing things have you seen? Obviously, you saw amazing things with your mom, but with some other people and in with, with your own life, some amazing things that you have seen herbs do for people just to kind of get people excited about finding out more. With myself, I can tell you I had chronic anxiety. Um, I mean, there's different practices that went into that, but I started to learn about supporting my my nervous system. So that was a huge one for me. So I would drink like skullcap and lemon balm religiously every single night. And what it does is especially skullcap after like a few, honestly, minimum four weeks, the longer, the better um, for longevity and it builds resistance in your body. So it's not like the stress is not happening. You build a resistance so that you feel less affected by the stressful situations. And it's crazy how much by doing that daily, I was like, obviously, like I said, there's obviously mindful practices and stuff that I was doing, got it getting out of toxic relationships, but all of that combined, it was, I no longer had anxiety. I was puking every single morning for years. That's how bad my anxiety was. And I, I had insomnia forever, like to the point that I was like, oh, I've just always been a bad sleeper. Like I, I remember being a kid and you'd go to sleep and you'd wake up and I don't remember that feeling. And then as I started to support my nervous system, I guess I started to go into better sleeps and deeper sleeps. And then, and I was like, oh my God, that's crazy that I woke up maybe once at night, but I actually get better quality sleep into deeper sleeps. And so all of that obviously helps you. So with myself, it's crazy how much I saw it. I also, I also helped my own endometriosis. I can't say that I cured it, but let me say I'm symptom free. So I had endometriosis and I did my herbs like red raspberry leaf, chastity tree berry, you know, Don Kwai. I was doing all these different things to help balance my hormones and also detox my body. Cause I totally believe that it was the HPV vaccine that I took that created that endometriosis and so same thing, I became symptom free. I no longer had the excruciatingly painful periods and all the symptoms and the painful sex and all these things that came with it that was not fun to deal with. Customers of mine who had stage four cancer, who, you know, alongside their chemotherapy, some people took chemotherapy, some people didn't. I have both spectrums coming in and what that looked like in terms of not losing their hair and doing all those things. People who, you know, weren't able to taste post, you know, COVID and all this stuff and got their taste buds back and what that looked like. People who were completely constipated in terms of, you know, what you can take to remove that, but also like something like slippery elm that over time removes the buildup of morbid matter in the system because your intestines collect over years and what that looks like to having regular bowel movements. And there's just so much that I've seen from, you know, acne going away and in, in teenagers to balance out their hormones to re, re hair growth, reducing grays in the hair. Um, there's a lot that you can, you can do and, and nature is incredible that way if you give it what it needs to. The only thing is, is not every herb works for everybody. So there's some trial and errors that happen. So for example, some people love valerian for the nervous system. For example, valerian doesn't like me. I feel like it works the opposite. It doesn't work. And I had to, okay, let's remove that. Let's try this one where some people are like, I love valerian without it. I'm not going to sleep. So there's different herbs to the body, right? It's like energetic almost. And so there's so many herbs that help with so like a lot of like you'll see in my book, right? There's so many herbs that help with anxiety. There's so many that help with insomnia and skin health. And then so you, you, you kind of find the one that works for you. And then you see such a difference. I'm glad that you mentioned that because that is one thing that we do need to do is tune in to our body and just kind of see mm -hmm. what does work well. And, and some of them we might not need. So we just got to learn what works for us. Trial and error. I mean, <laughs> especially because we have different deficiencies, right? Some like yes. for me, I think it's the kale is like, obviously I'm not deficient in, in, in whatever kale's replacing. So maybe it's an overdrive, right? So you don't know. Um, but your body tells you it's just a matter of listening to your body. That's why symptoms right. are a good thing. Your symptoms are just speaking to you. Listen to the symptoms. Don't suppress. Just like I've had, um, I've had clients come to me and as they tell me their story of how they got high blood pressure and then their doctor tells them, you know, go on high blood pressure medication. And as they explain to me their story in the beginning, if they just would have been nutrient it up to help with stress, it was stress that got them in That's that right. situation. Yeah. With a little bit of healthy counseling, they never would have needed the medication in the first place. You know, they are on 10 different medications because one has you have to take another over time, have to, you know, and we just keep going because it's affecting the side effects and then you have to need a new pill. If someone wanted to start an herb garden, what would you suggest to keep it from them being overwhelmed at first? This is new to them. Maybe just 
three herbs that you'd be like, just start with this. These are easy to grow and, and maybe even some that you can grow in your own home that you don't need to do outdoors if you have a good window with enough lighting. I mean, in your home, just the common, you know, house herbs, cooking herbs would be great. You know, basil, thyme. Thyme is an incredible herb for like congestion and coughs. It's like literally the remedy for whooping cough, for example. You know, so it's it's incredible when you're sick to be able to have that. So if you can grow thyme, you know, basil is super nutrient. And I would say maybe cilantro because it's like a natural heavy metal detox. So if you're eating it more, that's it's a really good one. Outside, I would absolutely start with lemon balm. Super easy. It's amazing. It's easy to harvest. It doesn't grow so big. So it's overwhelming. I would say mullen. Mullen grows nice and long. It's not overwhelming. It's incredible for the lungs. Mullen is like the lung herb. It's really good as an expectorant to remove removes mucus uh, build up in the chest. So it's really good for coughs, cold and flu season. Um, and they grow nice and tall and long, but they're not overwhelming and, and overbearing. You're probably going to already have dandelions. You probably already have stinging nettles in your backyard. You probably already have like, even ladies mantle. If you were actually to plant it, that's a hard question because I usually, I'm, I'm the one that says go in your backyard and find what you have and create what you have, right? Well, I um, think you've given some really good information because the basil, and like you said, it's very easy to grow. I do have some growing inside and I have some growing outside. I think that the biggest things I typically say whenever I do any consultations or talk to anybody is, is I think it's important before you try to incorporate all of these stuff to make yourself healthy, healthier, it's important to detox first. Detoxing is so important first. Why? Because we've got toxicity overload everywhere. If you're using, you know, conventional and the wrong detergents, if you're using the wrong dish soaps, if you're, you know, all of these different things that, you know, your water, if it's not filtered, if you're not cleaning your vegetables, if you're not getting organic, all of this stuff, which is impossible to be 100% toxic free. Um, it creates an overload to your liver and to your kidneys. And if you're going to be introducing all of these herbs or supplements or whatever you're taking to try to be healthier, it's important that you clean the body first so that it works that much better. So I would say detoxing is critical. Simple herbs like burdock or milk thistle are my favorite. They clean the liver um, and the, the kidney, but they also help you know, rejuvenate the bile in the system. So a lot of people that come to me that are like, oh, I'm constipated, which is so common and such a base cause of disease, it comes down to the liver. A lot of the times the liver, well, obviously there's diet and stuff, but the liver is over, you know, overloaded with toxins and it starts to not be able to secrete bile. And bile is essentially like the lubricant of the intestines and colon. And so if it's not secreting that, so these herbs like burdock and milk thistle are really good for helping it clean out and excrete that bile so that things just move kind of better and slow uh, and, and more smoothly so that when you're taking these herbs that you decide to take or supplements or whatever, um, you feel the effects that much better and quicker. And so we do, we need to have everything in balance and working towards that being a goal because if somebody has anxiety and all they're doing is one thing, like we need to have a strong immune system. We need to have the supplements on board. We need to be getting the herbs in our life and it all comes full circle. Do you know about the longevity of a dry herb when it's honestly, um, you could say for years and years, they typically say two years that can easily last like four or five years easily. Okay. Yeah. We can see that we were diminished a little bit, but it's still good. Great thing for you to have in your little emergency closet. Of course. And also you get this ebook off of your website and I will put the link up here and it is Tanya, the herbalist and check out her website, your Instagram. You're on Instagram, right? Oh yeah. So go and look up all of that information. It's a great place to start, especially with this book, because it is so simple. It is not overwhelming. It's easy reading. And I love the pictures as well. And so beautiful ebook and you did a great job. So I want to thank you so much for bringing us this very vital information and spending your time with us. And you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you don't mind sharing a little love and like share this information with people that you know would benefit from it. And you guys have a great day.